Hello and welcome to part 20 of my F1 2016 career mode here for the Brazilian Grand Prix. The tyre allocation we're going to go with harder because tyre wear is pretty high around this circuit, I'm sure. Uh, the, these are the practice programmes and once again I did not have time for the tyre management, so we've lost out on another 50 resource points. At the end of practice 3 we topped the session by about one tenth of a second on Ultimate AI, obviously. We hope you're enjoying your Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, here we are for qualifying. So let's go. Uh, so we're going to start our first flying lap on the soft compound tyre. It's a relatively short first, it's a very short first sector, so should be over pretty quickly it's at the end of this straight it's around 17 seconds is the benchmark we're only what far, a few hundreds off on the Toro Rosso so our pace around here doesn't seem to be that quick at the minute but we aborted that run and came into the pit fit a new set fitted a new set of soft tires and went out for a blast because we're currently in P22, which is last, if you don't know that already, so. Um, and coming to the end of the first sector, we're 0.79 of a second down. So we retired because there was no way we were going to get anywhere bothering. Okay, anywhere near the pole. As surely as the sun rises in the morning, the Brazilian Grand Prix packs out the grandstands. Or anywhere near bothering to qualify title deciders heartbreak triumph and home glory all these well then after an exciting qualifying session okay sorry for not showing you the um track circuit thing tour with anthony davidson or crofty but we cho chose to opted to start on the hards not the mediums and maybe go for one stop and so lights out and away we go for the brazilian grand prix 36 laps of the auto Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache, I think it's called, and we've already gained 10 positions. We've been barged wide by Marcus Ericsson onto the Astro turf there, and now just showing you that on the replay. So we just held our line around the outside, got barged wide, and we're in the slipstream of Lewis Hamilton now. We're going to go in between him and our teammate. And we're already in the points after, what, five corners? Just showing you this move on the replay now. On this, rewinding it to get it on the cinematic, which doesn't seem to be that great for some reason, but... Hamilton slowed down a lot after that, and when we went past him. We went up the inside of Valtteri Bottas, so we're already in P9, so that's 13 positions already. I might revert to the one stop for, for, for the hard, hard strategy, because I heard David Croft say in real life that Perez started on the softs, I think, and he said that he could have stopped off of the set of softs to the end. So we're going to try that and see if he was just talking nonsense or if he, if there is that is a legit strategy to use the hardest compound twice. Because it is a mandatory tyre for this race. But we've gone past three cars into turn five, I think this is. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, the slipstream and our straight line speed is sensational. So we just soared past all of them and went up the inside. And Valtteri Bottas had a huge engine failure. The end of lap, we're just showing a lap by lap graphic now of uh, the tyres. And maybe the gaps to the car in front who are on still on softs so that's interesting 
at the end of lap six, start of lap seven, set our personal best. We're in third place because some cars have come into the pit, some haven't. So we've got Hamilton behind us on hards. I don't think he's stopped already. Unless he just started on those tyres, but now we're in P1, we're in consistent laps out front, and at the end of lap 18, which is half race distance, we're going to come into the pit lane to fit a set of hard tyres and go to the end of the race, so I think, based off real life in Canada 2016, when David Croft said it, and I've said this earlier on in the episode, but... He said soft, soft to the end because the mandatory tyre was the hards for that race and the hard is the man one of the mandatory tyres for this race. So we're going to go hard, hard to the end and see how this pans out. This could either be amazing or horrendous and I think it might well be amazing. The end of lap, uh, start of lap 21, we've got Verstappen going round our outside. It'd be amazing if he completed the move, but he doesn't. He thinks better of it, or otherwise there might have been a nasty collision. Now, li listen to this team radio. It's a very, very... Uh, so... The engineer thinks we've got a problem with our car, like mechanically or something, because he said on the sensors we can see something faulty or it might just be faulty sensors. He said nothing to panic about though, just keep doing what you're doing. So We've got that to contend with as well now, as well as conserving our tyres till the end, hopefully. And... Our tyres are not that worn at all. Okay, maybe they are 40% at the end of lap 30. But we're currently in P2 from 22nd on the grid. With Ultimate AI, obviously, because we've been using that pretty much the entirety of this career mode. We used it in Australia. Um, and we used it from Belgium onwards in because after Australia I really wasn't enjoying it but the end of lap 36 it did not come up saying I needed to enter the pit lane for a set of mediums and we're going to come across the line for the World Drivers Championship So 20 seconds from second, no, second from 20 seconds. Very good race for us. Made the one stop work to perfection, and we have won the World Drivers' Championship because, as you can see, Ultimate AI is obviously, because I've already explained that, and in previous episodes. And we now have an insurmountable lead at the top of the WDC, so the Abu Dhabi race should be. Just a race. Still the win up. Still 25 points up for grabs. So it might look, make this championship look closer than what it actually is at the minute. Because obviously we've got about a 42 point lead or something, I believe. So obviously that's insurmountable. But if we don't DNF at um, Abu Dhabi and Raikkonen wins, it might at the end of the championship. It might look at close. It might look closer than what it actually currently is but obviously because we've won it at this race Hi, no I'm catching here. us in I'm Abu Dhabi should be a good race in Abu Dhabi because short. normally Keep it up. sometimes it normally in my career mode chucks up good races 
So, like if you want to see more. It really helps me out and lets me know if you want to see more. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. To, uh, or join me on this journey to bring Haas to the front. And I'll really appreciate it. And goodbye. And here's our trophy run.